So as we all know, this right here is the quadratic formula, and so far we have differentiated and also integrated. But what happened with taking the limit of this thing? Hmm. So let's go ahead and do it today. We will take the limit and let's do it with a just like the other two videos, but a approaching what though? If you say a approaching zero so we can make the bottom zero to make this interesting, I agree. However, if you look at the quadratic equation, if a is approaching zero, then we really don't have this term, and this is not really a quadratic equation. So I'm not going to do it with a approaching zero. In fact, Professor Michael Penn, he did a video on just that. You guys can go ahead and check that out. The link to his video will be in the description for your convenience. Hmm. So now what? Well, of course, it's either zero or infinity to make this interesting, right? Let's do it with a approaching infinity. And here's a small condition that I would like to add because otherwise we don't get any real results. If you just imagine putting the infinity into this a right here, you will get negative 4 times infinity times c, and that's going to dominate the whole inside because b is just a constant. So we'll get like square root of negative infinity. And that's not real. So what do we do? Well, don't worry about it because we can still have c. I'm just going to impose the condition that, let's say, c is less than 0, so that the whole thing itself will be past infinity. And keep things real. Alright, anyway though, the answer to this is 0, but let's see how am I going to make it slightly more legitimate to show you guys the work. <laughs> anyway, let's split the fraction then, I guess. So let's say this is the limit as a approaching infinity. Let's look at negative b over 2a plus or minus, I'm going to put this inside of the square root. So, little note, 2a equals square root. Well, 2 inside of square root is 4, and then a inside of the square root is a square. And because a is approaching positive infinity, so this is positive, so this is okay. And I can just put that inside here, and the whole thing is positive, so that's good. So we have square root, and then b squared minus 4ac over that, just 4a squared. Cool. Now, if a is approaching infinity, the first part is negative b over infinity, that goes to 0. And then secondly, you just have to look at this and that. And of course, the power on the top is just 1, the power on the bottom is 2. So the bottom is going to dominate in the top. So you're also going to get 0. I think that's also pretty clear. So, oh no, this right here is just equal to 0. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. Anyway, though, I know it's not like a super exciting result, but let's take a look at the graph of it so that you can see that this is actually kind of cool. All right, so let's consider y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And here, I want c to be less than 0. Yeah, c is negative. b, we don't care. And let's say a is approaching infinity, getting bigger and bigger. So, for the first graph, let's see. I'm just going to give you guys like a first graph. c is less than 0, so the y-intercept is somewhere here. I'm not talking about the vertex. I'm just saying the y-intercept. And because b is, can be any real number, uh, if a is, let's say, 1 or so, it's open up, right? So it could have been like this. But if a is equal to 1 and b positive, then you can get the vertex somewhere to the left, somewhat like that, yeah? Hmm. As, b, sorry, as a gets bigger and bigger, you know, the bigger the coefficient of x squared, the narrower the graph of this will be. So if you do it again, c is still right here, if b is still this, and then a is, let's say, 2 or bigger, then you will get like a narrow graph like that. Now, do do do, and then we are going to have a approaching infinity. So, how does it look like? Here is our c, the y-intercept. Well, earlier our answer is 0, and remember this is the x-intercept. So, as a approaching infinity, this means the x-intercept of the equation here, the parabola, will just be at x equal to 
zero as well. Wow. Huh? X intercept is when y equals to zero, so you just get zero and zero. So guess what? You are going to have it like right here. And remember, the bigger the a value is, the narrower the graph will be. So what's the graph? You are just going to get a vertical line, almost like a vertical line. That's horribly wrong because you're not supposed to do like this. This is not a, I forgot what that, the name of that function in differential equation, but I think some of you guys know. It's just like you go up one time and then here's the right hand side like that. So it's left and also the right. So it's like this. So this is the graph of infinity times x squared plus bx plus c. Yeah. Just like that. Pretty fun, huh?